Okay, we're holding uh, Laman Zayin Aleph, thirty-seven A, two, six, eleven lines from the bottom. The Gemara had a question in terms of how to understand the Mishnah. According to the Tanakhama, the Tanakhama says, although Orl and Kalayim are mitzvahs at Luis Boritz, they're relating to agriculture, nevertheless, they're applicable outside of Eretz Israel. A person has a fruit tree, first three yields are not permitted. Kalayim, if you pl- you're not permitted to plant wheat near or grain near a, a vineyard. Revelation is Avchodosh. Not only, seemingly, the reading is not only is that apical outside of Eretz Yisrael, <laughs> but even Chodosh, the new grain, which took root after the Korban Omer, is not permitted until the future Korban Omer is brought. No more offering is brought. Wait one second. That's Reb Lezer. What Reb Lezer is saying, no. That just as the Mishnah introduces or differentiates between mitzvah tlui sports, mitzvah shame tlui sports, whether it's ag- if it's agricultural based, then it only it's limited to Israel and not chutz Lawrence. Not only that, even chodosh. In addition, it's chodosh also, which means he's coming to argue on the Tanakhama, because Tanakhama is of the opinion chodosh, although it's agricultural based, the law applies even outside of Israel. Reb says, no, I disagree. The Chodosh is no different than Trum and Meiser, than the other agricultural the laws which pertain to agriculture. So that's our question. How do we understand the Mishnah? And what was the Gemara explain? What's the question? The Torah uses the term Moshvoseichem. Does Moshvoseichem mean after you've conquered and divided, conquest and dividing, or does Moshvoseichem mean your communities? If it's interpreted to mean your communities, then it's wherever you live. That's even Chutz Loritz. But if Moshe Vaseichel means after you're settled in the land, which is after conquest and dividing, then it's what? Then it's limited to Eretz Yisrael. So by, by Chodosh, it says Moshe Vaseichel. So does it mean your communities? So that would be even Chutz Loritz. Or does it mean after you've conquered and divided, after you settled in the land? No, 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 no. So the Gemara explained. The Tanakhama says that a chutz loretz, the exception to the mitzvah tluis boretz, agricultural based, although agriculture based laws are limited to Eretz Yisrael, but there are two exceptions, orla and kalayim. So the Gemara explained, orla and kalayim, what's the basis? Halachom shemi sinai. But chodosh is explicit in the Torah, he doesn't even have to mention chodosh. Chodosh is explicit, because it says Moshe Sechem. So if the Tanakhama interprets Moshe Seich means your community, that means even Chutz Lords. Or law he has to mention and Kalayim because that, that, that's not, it's not text-based. It's not ba- text-based. So that's the Chodesh. So that's the question. Is the Tanakhama stringent? So therefore Rebbe Lezer is lenient or vice versa? When he says Or law Kalayim means only that because he interprets Moshe Seich mean after conquest and dividing. And Rebbe Lezer, he explains Mokshvoseichem to mean your communities. That means even a Chutz Loritz. Well, you don't know which way. We're talking both ways here. Exactly. So know even though the simple like reading, that, that's our question. Right. That's our question. How do we understand the Mishnah? How do we understand Rebbe Lezer? Well, well, well if the basis how to understand Rebbe Lezer is how do we understand the Tanakhama, right? If the Tanakhama is speaking L'chumra, Rebbe Lezer is L'chumra. The Tanakhama is Lekula, then Reb Les is Lechumra. It's one or the other. There's two sides of the coin. That's why the Tanakhama... 
No, 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 no. It's not clearly stated in the Torah. It's not clearly stated in the Torah. No, 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 no. It, it, it depends what the word Moshe Seichem means. If Moshe Seichem means your communities, so then it's clearly stated in the Torah that it's not limited to Eretz Yisrael. Although it's land-based, wherever your community may be, you're limited, you're forbidden to have Chodesh. The new grain until the Omer is brought. That's, that's one understanding. But that's, it's only obvious if that's the way you interpret the Torah, the word Moshe Seichem. If your understanding of that way, that the uh, Tanakhama is disagreeing with that? We don't know what the Tanakhama says. When the Tanakhama says, Orlan Kalayim, does he mean to exclude Chodosh? Chodosh is land based, so therefore it's limited to Israel. So then Reb Lezer, when he says, Av Chodosh, he's coming to be Machmir, stringent. That's the easy that, and that's, that's, normally, that's normally the way we, we would read the Mishnah. The other way is this way. When he says Chutzmin or Levakalayim, why are they the exceptions? Halach Lom Shemi Sinai, although it's land-based. What about Chodosh? So simply, you would say also. But what what happens if I interpret the word Moshe Vaseichem to mean communities? So he doesn't have to mention that. If Orla and Kalayim, which is not based, it's not text-based, and logically based on the principle of land of agricultural, anything that's agriculture is limited to its role. And this is the exception of Lachum Shem Sinai. He doesn't have to mention Chodosh because that's the text. You know, the, the Gemara says, also be Rav. You know, every child knows that. If you interpret the word Moshe Vosechem to mean your communities. So if your communities would mean what? Wherever you are, even outside of Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, it's not necessary for him to mention it. He doesn't have to mention it. Because it's obvious. It's obvious from the text. So then, if the Tanakam is Machmir, so what's Reb Lezer coming to add? Right? He can't be coming to tell me L'chumra. Tanakam tells me L'chumra. So what's he adding? Unless Af HaChodesh means he's disagreeing. That just as the other laws are limited to Eretz Yisrael, Chodesh is also limited to Eretz Yisrael. That's the meaning of Af HaChodesh. Also Chodesh. Chodesh is no different than the other laws, like Truman Masin. Oral and Kalai, my great. That's Alechum Shem Sinai. But because of my understanding of the word Moshe Vaseichem, to mean conquest and dividing, that means it's limited to Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, it's no different than Truman Maser. So I understand that. I'm just, so I'm staying on that side of the argument. So that Reb Lezer is, 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 is lenient. That he's lenient. But wouldn't that be a redundant statement? No, it's not redundant. No. Because if he weren't, he would have said something. We're saying that the Tanakam is L'chumra. What, so, so why doesn't he mention Chodosh? So why doesn't he mention Chodosh? Right? That, that, that's, that's the point. Right. The answer, of course, is explicit in the Torah. Right. It says, Moshe right. Vaseichem. Something's obvious in the text, he doesn't have to mention. Right. That's obvious in the text, but it's only obvious, it's only obvious if the word Moshe Vaseichem means communities. So we don't know that. That's our question. If you hold Moshe Seich means communities, that means he's L'chumra, he's Machmir. That's L'chumra. No, 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 no. The other one is obvious because, because he doesn't mention it. We'd have to come out to the puzzle. Right? Simply, the reason why he doesn't mention it is because he holds it's no different than the other laws. What? Why? Look, if I read the Mishnah, read the Mishnah. Mishnah says all land-based mitzvahs are limited to Israel. Chutz mina kelayim, or lava kelayim. So how do you understand that? So all this, what about Chodosh? So he said, well, evidently Chodosh also, it's land-based. So that's limited to Eretz Yisrael. It's agricultural-based, that's limited to Eretz Yisrael. No, I understand. Well, Etrum also has its post, okay? And Maiz has its post. But I understand, we don't have to come on to the... Look, everything's post. Everything goes back to Psukim. Everything goes back to text, right? 
exactly. But other than halachas, everything goes back to texts. If you read the Mishnah, I'm satisfied with the Mishnah, even though I don't know the Pasuk. It says, It mentions, Except these are the two exceptions. So what's the simple understanding of the Mishnah? Only these two. These are the exceptions. Okay? So when Reb Lezis says, Ava Chodesh, he says, no, there are three exceptions. Or the Kalayim Chodesh. There are three exceptions. So I mentioned yesterday, why should we even consider <laughs> interpreting the Mishnah differently if the simple reading is, is, is that the Tanakhama is Lekula and, and Reb Lezis is Lechumra. So we mentioned, we've shown him say, because there's a Mishnah, an anonymous Mishnah in Orla, which says that Chodesh applies even Chutz Loritz. And since Reb Lezer is a minority opinion, so to, to attribute an anonymous Mishnah to a minority opinion, this itself is a Chiddush. Because normally we follow, we follow the Halacha, the Halacha normally follows the majority opinion. Mm-hmm. So if Reb Yudan Nasi established the anonymous Mishnah, seemingly it would be the Tanakama. It would not be Reb Lezer. That's the reason why we're trying our best to interpret Reb Lezer Lekula rather than Lechumra, for that reason. If the simple reading of the Mishnah is Lechumra, why interpret a Lekula? <coughs> right? It's like you have to bend over backwards. So the answer is I'm, what I'm explaining to you, because the Mishnah says in Orla, the Chodesh applies even in Chutz Loritz. So if it applies in Chutz, that means Reb Le- we're following Reb Lezer's position, not the Tanakam's position. We normally follow an anonymous opinion. That's the majority opinion. So therefore, we're trying to interpret the Mishnah, Reb Leza, Af is Lekula, not Lechumra. Only because of that. Only because of that. But then we have, so what is, Tanak, so what is the Tanakhama only mentioned, Kalim and, and Orla? He should say Chodosh. The answer is, because that's text, because that's obvious from the text, the way he interprets the word, Moshe Vesechem. No, 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 no. It's only obviously in test if that's the way you interpret the Pasuk. Rebbe Lezer says, I interpret the Pasuk differently. What you consider obvious, it's not obvious. It's no, it's an anonymous Mishnah. That's explicit in the Torah. That's Eretz Yisrael. Sabbatical year. Gemara will speak Netura. Or Orlus, yeah, Netura Vai, and Karim Ravai, that, that, that's linked to Orla. Okay, let's get back to the Gemara. So we're trying to resolve this. Toshma. Domer Abai, 11 lines from the bottom. Abai said, Man Tanu the Polagalid Reb Lezer. Who's the Tanu who argues with Reb Lezer? Rabbi Shmali. Rabbi Shmuel argues with Rabbi Lezer to Tanya. Lelamdoch, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Shmuel says to teach us she called Mok Shinemba Moshev. Wherever it says Moshev, Moshev means Moshev Sechem. Eino Elol Acha Yerusha of Yeshiva Div Rabbi Shmuel. The word Moshev Sechem after you settled in the land it doesn't mean your communities, but rather it means after you settled in the land. When you settled, if that's if the conquest and dividing, that's when you settled. So if that's the case. According to that means Rebbelez is Lechumra. Tanakama explains Moshe Vaseichem because he's saying Rebbelez argues with Rabbi Shmuel. So Rebbelez, Rabbi Shmuel says, what's the meaning of Moshe Vaseichem? Not communities, but rather settled. So how does Rebbelez interpret Moshe Vaseichem means communities? So if that's the case, when Rebbelez in the Mishnah says Afa Chodosh, he means not Lekula but Lechumra. Not only is Orl and Kalim the exception, we have a third exception, Chodosh. Even Chutz Loretz, you're bound by the laws of Chodosh. Is it, is a minority opinion? It happens. So, so it's one against one. one not one against one. Not one. Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Shmuel in the Mishnah. Does that change the dynamic in terms of how we hold? No. What if it was more than Rabbi Shmuel? If it was two people, would that have changed how we hold? Well, let's not get complicated right now. Okay, let's leave that. Okay, just the question is not a relevant question right now. Is it relevant? What's it relevant to? I just don't understand the why. Okay, it's not why. It's a Mishnah. We call it the eleven. So we're, we're ruling like a minority opinion. The Stam Mishnah, the anonymous Mishnah in our law, yeah. is following a, a minority opinion. Rabbi Yudanus, for whatever reason, he deemed that that should be the halacha. 
the Chodosh not only is, is in Eretz Yisrael, it's even in Chutz Loretz, which is not simple. We will eventually, at the end of, in, before Hilda Svira, mm-hmm. there's a very large Be'er Aloha, which discusses law, laws of Chodosh. If Chodosh, La Aloha, if Chodosh ha- has relevance to Chutz Loretz or not, how do we rule La Aloha? Yeah, yeah. There's no, you know, the brisk is a very machmer, always. The Shagas Aryeh was very machmer with, uh, with Chodosh. Shagas Aryeh was a contemporary of the Vilna Gaon. Others, they followed some rule, not, even though we have this anonymous Mishnah that Chodosh applies to Chutz Loretz, there are other sources to say in the Gemara that no, we don't rule like that Mishnah. So therefore, Chodosh, it doesn't apply in Chutz Loretz. And that's why throughout the ages, Jews were always lenient in regard to Chodesh and Chutz Lord, for that reason. Right? As I mentioned, in the United States, even the ones who were normally Machmir were, were lenient because of the surplus that we had. But even still today, people are Mekel with Chodesh. Because since in Europe, the Minig was always to be Mekel, to be lenient regarding Chodesh, so even in the United States, although we don't have a surplus. It was interesting, Ramosha, after the Russian deal, Connor did the, the wheat deal with Russia. So this is when Yoshin started in America. So there was a certain Jew, he was a Yeki, and he published a book, How a Jew Must Keep Chodosh in America, in the United States. And he went to Ramosha Feinstein for, a, for Askoma, for an approbation on, on his work. Ramosha would not give it to him, would not give it to him. He says, you want, whoever does it, it's admirable, mm-hmm. but to impose it on people, and if I put my, give you the approbation, it means I'm telling you people that they're, they're, they're bound by halacha. They must observe Yoshan. They don't have to observe Yoshan. Many Yisrael in Europe was, Jews did not keep Yoshan. People want to, it's admirable, but to establish it as halacha, I will not give you my, will not put my name to that. and will not give it to him for that reason. Because today it's, it's, it's much easier. Because the bakery, and though at that time bakeries didn't have it. If you live in the mo- most communities in New York City itself, bakeries they have, they store flour, which, which is Yashan flour. <laughs> so therefore you're able to buy it. It's, 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 it's available. One time it wasn't available, it was a hardship. So to impose a hardship on Jews for the sake of uh, Yashan, which is a Chumrah, that he wasn't willing to, 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 to do. We'll say with the morning on base, we'll discuss this. I had an incident, a very interesting story. I once, uh, about similar to Ramosha, why he would not give his askoma to this, but it's a slightly different. But you see the way the Dole Torah think. There was once I had a discussion with Steinman about him writing a certain letter to suggest that people should contribute money to a certain fund. And it was important, even though the money was a small amount of money, but that, that in, in the United States, they would contribute to this fund, it would show that we're concerned about the needs of Jews in, in Eretz Yisrael. So it would activate Amidus Arachmi. That was, that was the concept. So I went to Rosh Steinman, and he told me he would write the letter only if Rebel Yoshev would sign on it. Would sign on the letter. Okay. So I, went, so, I, so, I said, so I said, fine, look, Rebel Yosh agrees, signs fine. If he doesn't agree, he doesn't agree. Um, so afterwards, Rebel Yosh would not sign. Why did he sign? Very interesting. So Rebel Yosh didn't sign Zechat Sarek Levrocha because Rebel Yosh held that since he's the Posek Ador, if he signs, it's a Psak. If it's a Psak, that means you have to abide by it. And if they don't abide by it, it'll cause a prosecution on Kalal Yisrael. So therefore, that's the reason why he didn't sign. I mean, con- conceptually, he held of it. But once he signs, that means it becomes an obligation. Therefore, that's the reason why he would not sign. Therefore, the letter was not written. Because it would create a problem rather than a solution. That's the way these people think. So Moshe understood. Yosha, and it's, it's, it's admirable. It's a chumrah. There are positions like that. The moment he puts his signature on that... It's saying, you know, you're obligated to keep it. You're not obligated to keep it. Well, that's the way it would be understood. Okay? So Rabbi Shemal says that he interprets 
the word Moshe Rosechem to mean after you're settled in the land. Amado Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva asks a question to Rabbi Shmuel. Harei Shabbos nema b'moshavos v'nogos v'noheges b'ein boritz b'ein b'chutz loritz. Right? Says Losvaro Eish b'chol Moshe Rosechem. So what does Moshe Rosechem mean? Doesn't mean when you're settled in the land. Shabbos is what is applicable regardless of where you are. So what everybody agrees, Moshe Rosechem, regard to Shabbos means your communities. So why are you interpreting the Moshe Rosechem regard to Chodesh differently? Right? It should be interpreted the same way. It means your communities. Why only after you settled the land? Omar Lei, so Rabbi Shmuel responds to Rabbi Akiva, he says, Mikal V'chomer Asyo. Regarding Shabbos, I have a Kal V'chomer. So the Kal V'chomer elucidates the fact that their Moshevos does, Moshe does not mean when you're settled, but rather it means your communities. Why? Mam mitzvah's kalos no agos. Bein boritz, bein b'chutz loritz. Right? Shabbos is mitzvah tlu yibaguf. It's mitzvah shibaguf. It's incumbent on the person. It's unrelated to the land. So we have a question. Seemingly Moshevos normally means when it's agricultural related. It means mm -hmm. when you're settled in the land. So maybe Shabbos it also means this. He says, it's not possible. Shabbos, it's not possible. Because you have mitzvahs, kalos, which are incumbent on the person, or apical, wherever you are. So Shabbos, which is so chomor, you're going to mean to tell me what it's not? It's, it's going to be limited to the land? Shabbos, chamir, lokosh game? Good. It's not clear what it was. The Shabbos they had wasn't clear what it was. The Lamites, no, no, the Lamites Melochas were not given. The Mora, they were given Shabbos. I'm not sure what that Shabbos was. Okay, he's saying better. Kavachom is phenomenal Kavachom. Shabbos is, is, is Mitzvah Shibagufo. Right? It's not Mitzvah Satlut Sboritz. But she said, but fact, it may be the case, but it says Moshe Vaseichem. So why should I interpret Moshe Vaseichem in regard to Shabbos differently than I interpret it regarding uh, any, 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 any agricultural situation, right? It means because after conquest. Because there are other mitzvahs kalos in and outside No, which mitzvahs kalos? Which mitzvahs kalos? Which are incumbent on the person? Which are incumbent on the person? So Shabbos, so Shabbos which is also Chobos HaGuf, so it's incumbent on the person. You should not, you should only observe it in Eretz Israel. Why should we limit it? Just the opposite, just to the contrary. The others are less important. And there, regardless of where you are, you're, it's incumbent on the person to keep. So Shabbos, which is also incumbent, there it's only limited to Eretz Israel. It should definitely, so therefore the Kalv Chomer tells me the word Moshe Wasechem does not mean when you, you're settled in the land, but rather it means your communities. You're saying two things which are contradictory. If it's so important... Let me, let, let, me, let me explain it. Why, why do we observe Shabbos? The Gemara says in... Uh, it says a person who's a mumer l'dover echot. A person doesn't, is an apostate, meaning not because it's out of divineance. He doesn't eat kosher. Of course... He, 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 his prior, he, he, he's the priority. And because he likes to eat a certain non-kosher species, he eats non-kosher. What, what's his classification? He's still considered a full Jew. In this area, he's, 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 he's in violation, but he's still considered a, a credible Jew. What about a Jew who does not observe Shabbos? Even for the sake of, not, not that he's defiant. He's considered a l'chol ha He's considered a kofir. His classification, he's a heretic. Why? Because what is, why must the Jew keep Shabbos? Because it's a testament that we believe God is the creator of the world. So if a Jew doesn't keep Shabbos, you deny God is the creator. So if we're saying mitzvah kalos, regardless of where you are, you must keep, observe the, the mitzvah kalos. So Shabbos, which is so fundamental, you can say, well, that's, you only have to be in the testament to, to the world only if you live in Israel. Chutzlor, it's not. Right? That's, that's l'chumr, it's chumr. There it has to mean. I mean other locations. It means, it means when you're settled. 
telling me the word Moshe mean doesn't mean settled, but it means your communities. No, this is elucidating the word. It's telling me what the word means. The word. Love, Malchus. No, no. But again, but that's 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 seemingly that's agricultural based. He was speaking about tefillin, pet, uh, pigeon aben, uh, petachamor, sukkah, whatever, whatever it may be. So there, where it's incumbent on the person, it's, you're not limited to Eretz Yisrael. So Shabbos definitely you shouldn't be limited to Eretz Yisrael. No, it's very good with him. He doesn't need the Kalvah Chomer. It's easy. This is only a question of Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel interprets Moshe Seichem when you're settled in the land. So we have a problem with Shabbos. Moshe Seichem means your communities. That, yeah, it's, it's not a proof because you have the Kalvah Chomer. Right? But it was never a question. Right? The, the literal understanding means your communities. As he interprets every every He always says Moshe Seichem means he doesn't need the Kalva Chomer. Okay. Mid'omer Abayi man tamer de polak alei de Rebbe Lezer. Since Abayi says, who is the Tano who argues with Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Shmuel? Shmami or Rebbe Lezer. L'chumra polik shmami. It's a conclusive proof, definitive proof, that Rebbe Lezer says in the Mishnah, Af Chodosh, he's coming to argue L'chumra. That the Tana is of the opinion, the Tana is Rebbe Shmuel. That Moshosech means when you're settled in the land. Okay, so that means it's it's limited to Eretz Yisrael. Rebbe Leis says no. Af Af Chodosh, Moshe Seichel means your communities. He's coming to argue Luchum and not Lukula. We'll do. Yeah, that's 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 the basis. So we have to we have to well we have we have an anonymous Mishnah. In Orla, which says that you, you must keep Orla. So what? Therefore what? Abai is not. Abai is coming to explain this. We don't know who the mission in Orla is going. Who do I attribute the mission in Orla to? Am I attributing to Reb Lezer or am I attributing to Rabbi Shmuel? That was our discussion. So Abai, based on what he deciding Rabbi Shmuel, he's 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 confirming that Rabbi Shmuel is the Tanakama of this man, and therefore, and therefore, no, he's not ruling. He is. So now the question is, do we rule? Do we rule like him or him? Right, that's the question. Okay. Michti. Now, where did Rabbi Shmuel originally say that Moshe means when you're settled in the land, as we're explaining it? doesn't mean your community. That's by Nesochim. Now, this important Rashi. It has to do with this week's Parsha. There's a famous Sephardim in this week's Parsha. Okay. <laughs> Let's see Rashi. Rashi, um, before the lines get wider, about ten lines up. Rabbi Shmoli, the Shamina laid on Moshe with Achi Rush of Yeshiva. Be Chodesh Noah Yellow Borits. Rabbi Shmol's of the opinion that Chodesh is only apical only in Eretz Israel. Because what does Moshavus mean? It means when you're settled in the land, when you conquer and divide. Vos Reb Lezer Lemeimer, so Reb Lezer is coming to argue. Av Chodosh Noeg Ka'orlo. Chodosh is no different than Orlo. Ukelayim. V'noeg B'chol Moshavus. And it has relevance to all your communities. Amal Chum L'Polig. So he's coming to argue stringently. L'Lam Doch. Okay, now this has relevance. We speak about Nesochim, the Libations. In this week's parsha, what does it say in this week's parsha? It uses the word in regard to Nesachim when you come to the land of your Moshe Sechem. And you bring the korban. Rabbi Shmuel says in Nesachim, 
Mikrod Loba Kosm El Hatinam Nesochim Lebamos Tibor Velo Lebamos Yochid. Okay, we discussed. We have a Mishkan. A Mishkan, of course, is communal. You bring all communal offerings in the Mishkan. What happens if the Mishkan, the Oron, is not in its place? If the Oron is not in its place in the Mishkan, the Mishkan assumes the status of a Bamos Tibor. It's called a communal altar. Does not have the status of what? Of a Mishkan any longer. That's called Bama. That's Bama Sibur. When something, when the Mishkan assumes the status of a Bama, then you're permitted to build a private Mizbeach in your backyard or on your rooftop to bring your own carbon. No. It's, it's called a Bama because it's not a Mishkan. It's like the Mishkan is not, 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 not functional. Right? The Torah says that if you want to bring a carbon, you must bring it in the Mishkan. Therefore, it's what we call Shchut Echutz or Haktor Eschutz. You're not permitted to sacrifice outside of the Mishkan. What about if there's no Mishkan? So, wh so what is there? It's called Bama. Bama Sibur, you're permitted to build your private Mizbeach to bring your personal carbon. On, on the Mizbeach, that's called Bama Siyochit. You have one Bama Sibur. You have one Bama Sibur. We'll see? And Bama Sibur is limited to Eretz Yisrael. Bama Sibur is only in Eretz Yisrael, not in Chutz Loritz. A Bama Siyochit, you can have a Chutz Loritz. You want to build an old private altar, you can have wherever you are. Only when the bomb is Sibur. So again, so the, this Pasuk is to tell us that not only in the base of Migdosh do you have libations, but even a bomb of Sibur, when the Mizbeach doesn't have the status of, of the Mishkan, you must also have Nesochim. Asher ani no say lochem. It says what I am giving to you. What's no say lochem? The bama hano heges lokulchem. Lochem is plural. So if it's a bama siyochid, it's lochem. Asher ani no say lochem. What's lochem? Hakosim edaber hilko hakor chay moshvoseichem lav komokim shetem yoshvim. If I would interpret moshvoseichem to mean wherever you may be, meaning even chutz loritz, so that would be even bama siyochid. Right? Because there's no such... A bomb is is only... The communal Mizbeach is only in Eretz Yisrael. That's the equivalent of the Mishkan. That's only in Eretz Yisrael. Lav kom mokom shatem yoshiv mashma. Dein bomb is Sibur el mokom echod. Bomb is is not in all your communities. El hai moshev dechsiv osa kro lashmina da bomb is Gilgul. Shoi yosha Mizbeach ha nechoshes. Bomb is Gilgul. The first 14 years we came into Eretz Yisrael. This was the 14 years of conquest and dividing the land. For 14 years, called Yudal Shan Shekoshu Vechilku. 14 years we conquered and we divided. The first 14 years there was no Nisochim. Avon Bishabol is Shiloh. But when they came to Shiloh, which the Haino the Acha Yerusha Yeshiva, the first 14 years was called Abomas Sibor. When we came to Shiloh, that's after the conquest and after the dividing. This in the midbar. What would you have? On Amid base, we're going to discuss the midbar. We're going to discuss the midbar on Amid base. Okay. The shuv lo pasku in sochim b'am So now, what happened after Shila was destroyed? We had no vegivah. There was no, but there was there was a b'am Once the sochim were introduced regarding the mishkan, the mishkan. Even after Mishkan Shiloh, even after that was it was destroyed, it continued above the Sibur. Vafil Mishchor Shiloh, even after Shiloh was destroyed, voice of the Sibur, but no vegivon, no vegivon was above the Sibur, was a communal mizbeach. Vainu de Komer Lamdoch Shkomo Klomer mid the Pirish Loch Kro b'Bomo Hanuegis Bukulchem. Right when the Torah speaks Nesochim, it says Lochem. So we're speaking about a bomb which has relevance to all of you. That's a communal mizbeach. Shema min a moshev dechsiv bin nesochim, lav komokom mashma. Because if it would be a private mizbeach, it's wherever you are. So what does the Torah say? Kulchem. It's a communal. Dim ken have a bomus yochen has is komokom b'shes heter abomus. If you if the Torah permits you to bring the carbon wherever you may be, why is the nesochim limited to kulchem? The connotation of kulchem means bomus sibur. Okay, so that's Rebbe Lezer. So if you would, it, you would 
explain, interpret the word Moshe Vazechem to mean your communities, then it would even be referring to what? Bomas Yochid. Right? But since Rabbi Shmuel says Moshe Vazechem means conquest and dividing, that's Eretz Yisrael. And so what does Kulcha mean? It means the Bomas Tzibor in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael. Because you don't have a Bomas Tzibor outside Eretz Yisrael. Bomas Yochid you can have anywhere. But if I will interpret Moshe Vazechem to mean your communities, wherever you may be, so that it, we can't be talking about a bombas sibor, right? That it's it's a bombas yochid. Then the sochim would even apply to even when you bring your personal carbon on your private mizbeach. No, but just showing that's where Rabbi Shmuel said his, 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 his stated his position that the word Moshe Vosechem, Rabbi Shmuel interprets to mean when you're settled in the land. It doesn't mean your communities. Shiloh. No, not the first 14 years. Right. Not a bomb of Not a communal. <coughs> a private misbeach, wherever you be, you build your, your, your altar and you bring a korban. Not a There was. Factually, there was. Eretz Yisro. Correct, correct. Correct. No, 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 no. No, no. Again, if I interpret, it says, when you come t to Moshe Vosechem, the Torah introduces, introduces Nesochem, libations, and it uses the term Kulchem. Right? That's the passage we quoted. Ani, it says, excuse me, Asher Ani no se lochem. Right? That's the passage. No, 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 no. That's why he's interpreting. No, no. Look. Because since he interprets Moshe Seichem to mean to when you settle in the land, therefore Kulchem doesn't mean individually. Because sometimes the word says, even when we speak in the plural, it means individually. Therefore, if Moshe Seichem means in the land, Kulchem means Bamas Sibor. It means in the land, because you can only have a Bamas Sibor only in Eretz Yisrael. If it's a Bamas Yochid, you could have it anywhere to be continued. Kaddish.